in installing these uh, buttons where the light switches would go. Um, the easiest way that I've found so far is to, of course, we got to remove this anyway, so that we can put the relay in there. Is to remove this and then tape our data cable. We'll tape our data cable to the Romex cable, pull it up into the ceiling, and then we'll pull some of this um, Cat5 cable, you know, enough to where there's still some in, in the attic, and then pull it back down. That way I don't have to worry about trying to find, fish it down and trying to find it. And uh, The easiest way would be to fish this down, have a camera, find it, pull it out, be good to go. But since we can't do that in this situation, we're going to take this to the Romex, pull it up, put us some slack of the Cat5 in the attic, pull it back down, make sure we leave enough slack so that we... We don't have to do it again, of course. Um, and we'll have our Cat5 cable ring. Okay, so I've got my Cat5 taped to the coax. And always, 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 always make sure that the power is off. Um, use a test light. Well, you know, do whatever it takes to make sure you're not going to electrocute yourself. Always use caution when you're piddling with, you know, 120 volts or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't feel good if you touch it. And it could be dangerous. So, yeah, use caution. Know what you're doing. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and go up in the attic and pull it in. And it looks like it's pulled back to where I should not have anything to stop it. And it should be good. So let's pull her on up. So now we want to work back in the attic, which yours might be in a crawl space. Mine's in the attic. We'll work back here and find where it's located to pull it up and get our Cat5 up here in the attic. Dusty. Should always wear a dust mask because look at that. That's a lot of dust. But anyway, I've located the cape, the uh, Romex that goes down to the bedroom. And now I just want to pull it up until I see the Cat5. And look at that Cat5 cable. So now I want to undo my tape, pull up a bunch of the Cat5 cable, tape the Romex back to the Cat5 cable, and pull it back down into the bedroom. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I pulled out a good bit, <laughs> probably way more than I needed to, but better safe than sorry. There's the end of it. Uh, plenty of Cat5 cable up here, as you can see. So hopefully, it might even be enough to make it to where I need to go. But that should be plenty. So now, we, with it taped back to the Romex cable, we fish it back down in there, go ahead and get it started. We don't want to push it too far down though because if we push it too far down then i'm not going to be able it's going to get the cat 5 is going to get bound up above the box or below the box or something who knows and we won't be able to uh fish it back in and of course come back in and put your insulation back of course mine needs to be replaced soon pull it till this is pretty tight and sticking out of course in the box and then while I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and take this and see how far it'll reach. It might reach my uh, my network closet, but I don't know. We'll find out. And yes, it does reach. So I'm going to go ahead and fish it down into my network closet. As you can see, I've already got um, all my rooms ran for the Ethernet. And this is going to be my first line in this house going to the uh, switches for my home automation system. So it's pretty exciting. And it looks like I even have enough to where I can probably hook it down there. Come back through, make sure I don't have any kinks. Yeah, I know I've got a lot of 
mess up here, but hey, it's coming along. Okay, so now I just want to pull this. Easily should start seeing it's all tailed up in there, so come on. I put a little too much electrical tape. Yep, there we go. Don't want to pull too hard. Come on. Come on. to get my fingers in there it's one of those things where you want smaller hands right <laughs> just kind of finagle it and uh, there it is look at that Brenda Cat 5, got my Romex back in. I'll unwrap all that tape and go in my closet, make sure the Cat 5 is the correct length, cut it, splice it, and move on to the next step. I was trying to pull from the attic and it was bound up in here. But I'm just going to go ahead and push a good bit into the wall. way I have enough slack now you never want to like when you're in the attic if you can't get it it's better to just come down and do this because if you try to yank on it or something you're gonna end up tearing up the wire so once you feel like you've got plenty enough uh, cable then you can go ahead and Let's see, I might not have to, there we go, just don't want to have to pull too hard, that should be plenty, it's touching the floor, okay, so now the fun part is over, <laughs> now the easier part, I don't have to go in the attic anymore, so I'll put a Cat5 or an RJ45 cable, or end on this cable, <laughs> and then Come back in here. I'm gonna cut this wire and splice it. Eventually, I'll make a uh, RJ45 converter PCB thingy. But for now, I gotta splice the wire and connect the wires directly to where I'm going. So let's put a relay in here, hook a button up, and move on. I'm excited. Now, when you put this relay on. Um, I could just go ahead and stick that in there like that but look how much of that copper is showing so you want to go ahead and uh, trim that to where it just fits into where you don't see any copper so let's see may not have loosened it enough I'll have to loosen it a little bit more but you want to make sure that hardly any copper is showing um, that way none of the other wires because you're gonna have these wires nearby and you don't want them touching that and shorten out so I've shortened them so it's just barely showing which if you look at the relay you can see about how deep it is now it doesn't go all the way to the back obviously but it probably goes about to that line yeah there's a line on both sides so you want it just see how far that goes in which it doesn't go in very far now granted it's going to go in a little more because it does have a little recess to it but anyway you don't want it any copper showing when you plug this in now unfortunately with this relay um these terminals here will not fit on the Romex on my house which I believe is a 12 gauge 
and I want to say these are probably up to a 14 gate so unfortunately I had to swap this terminal out for one that would work with my Romex cables because um, when I tried these I had to open them up with a screwdriver and then once I got them in there I couldn't get them to tighten down and it'd fall out and you know just big hazard so you want to get relays that will fit the Romex that you have in your house so if yours is 12 gauge then obviously you want larger terminals so just want to let you know all right so i got the new end soldered on and it feels a lot better if i wiggle it it's not going to come right off all right so now i just got to hook up my data lines uh, got the five volt the ground and then the um, output from the controller and then on the uh, button here, let's see, there's a positive and a negative. Hard to get it to zoom. Kind of see it. Positive up here, negative on the bottom. Negative being ground, positive being uh, 5 volt. That way uh, it lights up the LED and then these other two one will be 5 volt and the other will be um, the input on the controller so it'll go to the input on the controller and that way um, when you push the button it will turn the light on and here's what everything is if you use the uh, orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown format on your uh, RJ45 jacks so all right so I got my relay hooked up I've got the power the 5 volt coming into the button so since it needs a 5 volt uh, for the signal to send back to the Arduino I went ahead and just jumped off that same 5 volt with the uh, resistor to the positive on the LED because this 5 volt is always going to have power so that way I don't have to run a bunch of wires to it and that makes it a little easier it looks a little tacky but you know I'll improve it in time eventually I'll have a, P a PCB that will have an RJ45 jack where you just plug it in <laughs> no big deal <laughs> But this is the testing stage, so this is what I got so far. So all I got to do is hook up my ground here for the LED, and then my input to the controller here, and I should be good to go. And of course, all I got to do is plug the controller in and see what happens. All right, so got it connected to the controller. Check that. Out. That is cool, the LED is lit up. Of course the relay is currently off. I don't have power to the relay uh, from the house for the light yet. Um, Cause obviously I don't want it hanging out like that when I'm trying to push a button. I don't feel like electrocuting myself or anything crazy like that. Anyway, uh, push it all back in there and see what happens. And there's the controller. It's got an Arduino uh, connected to it. it. Looks good. Can't wait. I got the garage hooked up, which is, right now is just the sensor because I can't get that working right. But the sensor works, but the opener part, I just. Every, every time I lose power, the door opens or closes. So I got to figure that part of the code out, which I'll probably just have to wire it directly to the Arduino and use one of the digital pins rather than going through uh, the shift regi registers because when the shift registers boot up they want to turn on for like a slight millisecond or whatever and then turn off and it's just enough to open the garage door so um, I'll figure that out in time but for now I'm going to get the light switches hooked up so this would be that bedroom 
light switch I'm working on. Pretty cool. Okay, so I got my new light button. <laughs> it's not really a light switch, so we'll call it a light button. We'll hooked up and working. So there is a slight delay because when I push this button, it's gonna update the server and then uh, along in the code, the Arduino is going to check to see if the light should be on or off. So it, there is a slight delay. So I just hold it down until the light turns off. And the light's off. Well, it's not too much of a delay, but you know, I don't know. That's so cool. So I just hold it down, light turns on. Sometimes it's like super quick, sometimes it takes a second. That is so cool. It just depends on the web server. Sometimes the web server won't be running um, as fast as you'd like it to because, you know, of course I've got other websites on there, so. There we go. See, that was a slight delay. That is just too cool. I love it. It's nice seeing your projects come together and work. Oh, it's so fun. Unfortunately, <laughs> it won't let me use the phone and do the camera at the same time to be able to control with the website, but it works. So now if I go to the website, it'll actually show that the light is off. And then if I hit that again and I refresh the website now, it'll show that the light is on. And then I can either turn it on or off with the website. So that's the cool thing about doing it this way. Plus. I could be anywhere, log into the website, and be able to make sure that my lights are turned off. So eventually all, all the lights in the house, as you can see, there's still switches everywhere else. This is my first button. Eventually all the lights in the house will be done this way. That way if I leave and go to work and I, oh crap, did I turn the lights off? I can just go to the website and, oh hey look, that one's on, that one's on, off, off turn them off, make sure my garage door is closed, all that good stuff. So, I don't know, I like it. It's so cool. Thanks for watching.